Hello brothers and sisters in Christ. If you hear some of the chickens, a lot of the chickens are running around. So I just wanted to read a couple of emails that I've got that I thought were very important. Um, just to kind of push again the uh, gospel tracks. I got an email from a brother in Christ. It says, hello brother Philip. New subscriber here from PA. I found you through Brian's channel and I have been very pleased with your sermons and meekness. Glory to Jesus Christ. Amen. Glory to Jesus Christ. I'm not always meek. I try my best. Thank you for the encouragement. I appreciate it. Um, continues on says, I have watched just about every one of Brian's videos. <laughs> Same here. And it has been refreshing to find another elder who doesn't compromise when preaching the KJV. Amen. In the sense that I'm starting to the last week I've fallen behind a little bit on my studies to put out for you guys brother sister Christ because I've been going over some studies that some of the brethren have been doing and going back to some of the old videos uh, getting back to highlighting my Bible that I talked about in an old older study about pencils I got this uh, big print Bible so I can start highlighting it and going through it and I kept putting it off putting it off so this week I've been highlighting through it a lot um, but yes having more than one teacher is a good thing a Bible teacher continue here. I just turned 23 in August, so I'm like a sponge when it comes to learning the KJV. That's exactly how I was too. When you first get saved, you have such a love of the truth, and if you came into being a false convert or you got told lies by anybody, that love of the truth, you just get into it saying, I want to know the real truth. I've been told all this stuff. I want to know what the truth is. And you start doing Bible studies with the King James Bible, and you just go crazy. I watch videos over and over same ones over and over had my favorites it says right here what are some of the things that you are in need of brother is there any way I could support your ministry All right I've had a lot of people ask me this uh, brother sisters in Christ God provides for my clothes and he provides for my food and this isn't me um, being stubborn I know the Bible says that a uh, um, the laborer is worthy of his reward. I hope I'm saying it right because I don't, I don't have it written down. I understand that we're supposed to take money as, as the brethren and give them to, to other brethren that are in need, the poor. And we're supposed to help brethren who are in, wanting to serve God in a, in a more full-time capacity to the point where they can't do a job and do the ministry that they're doing for the Lord at the same time. All right? I understand that. I'm not trying to be prideful. The Lord has blessed me. Um, when I first moved here, I was sitting on the deck. I was still kind of kicking video games. This was four years ago. Uh, when I uh, started getting to making some videos when I moved here, was in the process of getting games and movies and TV shows out of my life completely. I still struggle with them to this day. But getting them out, and um, uh, the Lord just, I bought all my food. And then in four years, the Lord has taught me to do a garden. I've got chickens everywhere. Um, I don't know if I can or not. <laughs> I need a volunteer. I know. The Lord blessed me with chickens. Hello. Yeah. Now they all come. Oh, oh. There you go, buddy. Hey. He's blessed me with chickens, so I get eggs. He's blessed me with fishing. Um, the kayaks are very expensive. I've been borrowing a kayak from a neighbor for the past three years. And I wanna say maybe two months ago, I came across a kayak. It's a cheap kayak. It's a little bit harder to balance, but I was able, the Lord was blessed me with getting a kayak that's a fishing kayak. And I don't have one of those GoPros, part of me wishes I did, but the body of Christ is hurting. There's people that need money for food, for clothing, brethren out there that have lost their jobs to get through each month. Um, me getting a GoPro just isn't necessary. But I go out there and I go fishing, so I get fish. Um, I've learned, uh, I didn't get to hunt the bear, the uh, wildlife service took care of the bear. And I was blessed, a neighbor called me up and said, hey, you wanted to learn how to skin a bear? And I said, yeah, I do. And he's like, well, I got a free bear. Uh, why don't you come help me? And I went and helped him, and he gave me half the meat. I'm learning how to hunt. Um, I'm hoping to get a deer this year, uh, this winter, for the winter season. Uh, but the, the ring of wrap it all around, 
I spent thirty dollars. I spend anywhere between thirty to forty dollars a month at the grocery store for food, and um, the Lord has blessed me with that. I really don't want to be a burden on the body of Christ. There's a lot of people that can use the money. Um, I'm not debt free. I have a, a mortgage. I know a lot of people shun that, um, but the Lord has blessed me with getting out of debt. All my credit cards done with. Um, my truck. I own my truck. And I own everything. So the bank wants to come take my home. I jump in the truck. Right? But um, the point is, is the Lord has has uh, provided for me. Right? There's hardly in a lot of stuff I get at the grocery store. People will be like, "You shouldn't be getting that." <laughs> Every once in a while, you know, I get some of the baked cookies uh, from the bakery. Um, but for the most part, you get a bag of uh, I get bags of rice. Um, and then on top of that, there's some canned stuff that I'll get and some jar stuff that I'll get. But for the most part, I just eat rice, potatoes. I grow potatoes. So I do my potatoes, my vegetables, uh, fish, the meat, the bear meat, and um, eggs, you know, and bread. I have to buy bread. Um, I'm going to start looking into making some of my own bread. But that's going to cost me a little bit more money because I don't grow wheat. I'd have to buy the, the materials. When you start buying all the materials to make stuff, the price starts going up. <laughs> you know, that's why they're this, this, the deception is, is to get you to spend money, the cheap money, on the bad stuff because it's already made and it's cheaper than buying all the fixings to make it yourself today, which is sad. But sometimes there's brothers and uh, sisters in Christ out there who have found deals at like farmer's market at certain places where they can get huge bags of flour and wheat and stuff like that. And that bag will last them all year almost, and they make bread all year. Um, but the point is, is the question, I kind of beat around the bush. The Lord has provided for me, and I don't want to be a burden on the body of Christ. Okay, I have an income, retirement income, and right now the Lord has blessed me that it's still secure. I mean, anything can happen when it comes to retirement. Um, anything can happen uh, with this country. But right now, everything seems to be secure, and I've learned to live off of it. Um, the thing that gets to me is I, I was talking to some of the brethren about I wish I was saved when I was younger, because what God has taught me how to be content with food and raiment today, I wish I had that mentality back then when I was younger. I was making uh, more, almost equal to more money back then, because I was minimum wage as a kid. But I was making more money when I was in the military, and, it was, and I was more broke than I am today. Uh, and I made more money. But I also spent it left and right on junk. Sinful stuff and junk. I didn't learn, know how to be, learn how to live being content and doing things that please God. I was a false convert back then. I always look at that. But on the flip side, Brother Sister Christ, I remember talking to a brother in Christ. He said, I've been saved for 11 years. And I said, Are you? I don't know why I said it, but I was like, are you ready for another 11? And I looked in the mirror, and um, I was on Skype, and he just, you saw his face just melt. He's like, no, I want Jesus to come back soon. I don't want another 11 years down here. So that's the, the, the cons. When I always talk to the Lord about why didn't I get saved sooner, those, I don't know if any of you brothers, sisters in Christ have those discussions with the Lord about why didn't I get saved sooner. There's some pros to it, but the biggest con is knowing that I'd have to live in this wicked world even longer before Jesus Christ comes to get to me. Because <laughs> you know He hasn't come yet. So if I got saved at 20, then instead of being putting up with this wicked world for 4 or 5 years, I've been putting up with it for 15, 20 years. You know, knowing that I'm still having to be here for another 15 or 20 years. Uh, but I appreciate it. I have brothers and sisters Christ asked. I did put up, like if I remember, I did put up a donation tab once for the camera that I'm using right now. I hope the wind isn't too much, because I'm not using my lapel mic. The wind's picking up. Um, and I thank the brethren for it. Uh, it works a lot better, better quality. Um, it's just all around better than that old, old camera that I was using. And I thank the brethren for it. So there might be times that I'll open up the donation tab for a specific thing, and when I get the funds for it, I shut down the, t the donation tab, because on a month-to-month -month basis, God is taking care of me, and I don't want to take advantage of the brethren. Okay? There's other brethren out there that are in need. Okay? Uh, one of them was uh, brother uh, was mentioned, brother Brad. I 
can't pronounce his last name. Avenshine, I'm sorry brother, I'm still new to last names, but there's a brother Brad, he's doing some videos, he's trying to get into ministry and he's trying to preach the word and he lost his job because of the mask and what's going on in the world. There's some other brethren out there that are hurting uh, and they could use a little funds to help out to get from month to month. Um, there's people out there. I mean, that's what Paul did. He would take a collection and he would take that and share it with the brethren that need it. Okay? I could, I don't know, I just don't want to, I don't know if I want that responsibility or burden to be an intermediary and say, well, I'll do a donation tab to give to some of the poor brethren. I mean, that's a big responsibility and there's a lot of temptation. Um, but there's brethren out there that do have donation tabs and they are hurting and they are needed. There's some brethren out there that are doing full-time ministry in the sense that they don't have a job and the whole point that they don't have a job is so they can focus 100% on making videos, lifting the body of Christ, holding the body of Christ accountable to the Word of God, lifting the body of Christ, and protecting and warning the body of Christ about false people. And through all of that, there's always opportunities to witness for Jesus Christ, to preach the plan of salvation to lost people that come along. Okay. So, I uh, kind of went off on a tangent, but like I said, the Lord supplies me everything I need. I'm getting down to eating two meals a day. Uh, you don't need three meals a day. Um, there's, time, there's days I've only eaten one meal. I don't need three meals a day. Uh, so, and then he goes on to say, is there any way I can support your ministry? I appreciate it. Brothers and sisters of Christ out there, I appreciate it. Crunch time might come. I'm not too prideful that I won't stop and say, hey, I need help. Uh, some prayer updates. I already talked about it. The, we've gotten a lot of um, fog. This morning it was all foggy. We've been getting fog every night. And we've only had a few days this summer that's been super hot, like 110. It was 110 degrees a week ago. Or maybe it was four days ago. Um, on my deck but the ground has water and moisture and my cistern slowly fills up over time as long as the ground stays moisture and wet and it doesn't dry out my cistern's not going to dry out it's just going to slowly fill back up but I had a guy come out and look at the pump underneath the house and it looks like maybe the power because I have a big tank back there full of water that I can't use the pump's not pumping it to the house uh, that I have underneath the house and when I went through the drought I don't know if you guys for those who aren't been following the ministry for four years, I was shocked that I've been making videos for four years, off and on. Um, both the cistern and the tank went out, and there was no safety switch. So both pumps burnt out. They are very old, but they burnt out. They could have been still going for another 10 years, but they burnt out because there was no safety switch. So I had to have a new pump put down there and a new pump put up here. And I made sure that there's a safety switch down there. So even though there's a little bit of water left in the cistern, when the water falls below a certain line, it'll shut the pump off so the pump doesn't burn out. Uh, when you got no water going through the pump and it's just air, the pump will heat up really, really heat up and it burns out the pump. I'm gonna wait for him, wait for her to finish. That's my chicken over there that lays the blue eggs. Um, so I got a new pump. That, that cost me, that blew my savings big time. And that, that happened at a time I was trying to get out of debt. Uh, just a couple years ago. Um, so I put the new one under there and since the cistern's been working just fine, I haven't really been worried about it. But the pump shut down on me this summer because the water level went too low and I couldn't get the water from my tank. So I have a guy coming out to look at it. He thinks that I maybe got the wrong pump has the wrong power supply like I have to I have 110 to it and it's supposed to have 220 or 240 uh, so I uh, God's blessed me that there's gonna be a guy coming out and taking care of that um, for all those who've been praying for that all my water problems and everything thank you for your prayers I get that fixed and I get things running the way they're supposed to uh, this fall I've got the guy same guy is gonna come out and he's gonna clean it out that cistern is so old that's like 30 years old, it's got a, th a thick layer of mud in it. And that thick layer of mud, every, if, even if it's six inches, that's a lot of water I'm missing out on because there's mud in there instead of water. And it might be six inches to a, uh, to a foot of mud down there. And I need to get it cleaned out. It's gotta be done during the rainy season because they've gotta flush it out and suck all the water. They gotta get all the mud mixed in with the water and then just pump the whole thing out at once. 
and just empty the cistern completely. So that's something I got to have done this fall. So I need prayer for that. And I, that's how you can help the ministry. You want to support the ministry? Prayer. I do need prayer all the time. Prayer for wisdom, for patience. Uh, one of the biggest things I'm working on right now is bitterness. Um, and not, you know, anger. You know, just being frustrated with some of the things that are going on in this world. And the attacks on the ministry and, and stuff like that. I could definitely use prayer for that. The water is a big prayer thing. So that's an answered prayer. God filled the cistern back up, then I'm back to running off the cistern. I've already done this in another video, that prayer request. But the guy's coming out to look at that. That was a big thing. The next thing is the hillside. I'm clearing out the hillside. There's a lot of erosion on the hillside, and my house is not in danger of falling down the hillside at all. But the deck it, that goes over, goes out over the hillside a little bit, that the way they did those beams it's like i've had guys come look at it and they just shake their head and said hey they should have had these buried into the ground pretty good and they should have done it like this and then they should have done it like that it looked like at one time they went down there put new beams and then took out the old beams it's like yeah I, that's how they do it they put new beams underneath to hold the deck up and then they just did away with the old beams that were falling apart or something and um so I'm looking at that and I'm like, oh, I had one guy come out and look at it and said, well, you need four beams in the back. They didn't put enough in the back. That's going to cost you five grand. Um, and that doesn't include repairs. The wood, I've tried doing the repairs myself and I slowly keep doing repairs on the deck when wood starts to rot out and stuff. Um, I had somebody come and do an estimate on the hillside. Because um, like I said, I live off a budget, budget and I'm doing my best to live off that budget. But I'm also... Um, trying to share what God has shared with me with, with the brethren, okay? Um, but everything, it just, I guess what gets me, brother and sister Christ, here's a great example. That hillside, um, I got an estimate on it two years ago, and I got estimated anywhere between six to eight grand to do a retaining wall in the two areas I need to retain off the walls. And I can't do it with my back, and uh, I can't do it by myself. It's not a one-man job. Now, if I was to go, okay, I got my six to eight grand, say I got eight grand, okay, it's been two years. Now I cut and come and look at it, they're gonna be like, well, now because of inflation, it's gonna be 10 to 12 grand. That's what I'm fighting a lot on everything, you know. When I went to look at those pumps and stuff, I was like, at the time, I could only afford the pump down there, uh, and I had to wait to save up for the pump up here. And every time I kept going back thinking I could get the pump, it was always a little bit more, so then I had to plan ahead saying, save up an extra 200 bucks. The pump ended up being almost $400. The one in the well was $600. Um, but you know what I'm saying? You, you go, okay, here's a budget. This is how much it costs. I'm going to save up for it. And when the time comes, it's gone. The price has gone up. And that's the thing. To try. It's if people keep thinking, our economy's doing great. Then why do the prices keep going up? Our economy's not doing great. You can bless this ministry with your support by prayer. I love the brethren, um, not because I'm patting myself on the back, but when a brethren makes a comment under one of my videos and says, hey, what about this? Or, hey, thank you for teaching me this. I was thinking the same thing or I was going over the same thing. Thank you for this study, brother. It's encouraging to me. Encouraging me supports the ministry. Okay, and It encouraged me to know that I'm just not casting pearls before swine and my ministry is just not fruitful. You know, that it's not reaching anybody. Okay. I move around a lot because I have a hard time standing still. I like doing a lot of my stuff setting, but I thought I'd do standing today. Um, but that's how you can help the ministry is pray for the ministry. Pray for me. Uh, biggest prayer I always pray for the brethren is to keep standing. Pray that I stand, stand, stand. And I pray the same for you, brothers and sisters in Christ, that you don't be part of the falling away. Keep looking for Jesus Christ. I pray that you keep looking for Jesus Christ every day. Right, that's the key. Okay, you're hiding God's word in your heart because you're looking for Jesus Christ to come back any day. Right? Not two months from now, not six months from now, not maybe next year, or maybe we've got another ten years before he comes back. Every day I pray that the Lord protects and watches over you, brothers and sisters of Christ, and keep you in a standing position. And if you've fallen flat on your face, that the Lord gets you back up. 
back to that standing position. I've fallen flat on my face as a Christian. I still struggle with things, brothers and sisters in Christ. Okay? So that's what you guys can do for me today. Thank you for the prayers of the past, and thank you for the prayers of the future that, you're gonna, that you guys will pray for me. I just want to thank you. I thank you, thank you for your prayers. God is answering prayers. Like I said, I have all I need and then some. I don't deserve anything that I have here. Uh, the chickens, the, 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 the garden, the truck, the, the, the deck to sit on and talk with them at night. I've been looking at the stars lately at night. I count up to three moving lights to, and three shooting stars. Some nights I get zero shooting stars. Some nights six shooting stars when we got clear nights. But I sit out there and listen to the Word of God. I talk about all the stuff that the Lord has provided for me is a blessing. I don't deserve any of it. And I thank the Lord for it. And I thank you for asking that question. Um, he says here, uh, this brother in Christ says, I see your channel is extremely underrated in my opinion in your video. Warning. Well, I'll stop there. In my opinion. Um, all I want to say to this is this. There's a lot of brethren trying to get into ministry right now. And they've got good teachings. And there's a lot of us. And I understand when people can't focus on more than one minister or more than one they can't focus on everybody's ministry we got all these brethren we love each other but we can't watch everything like i said i've been spending the week watching some of the brethren's videos people have been making some videos um and some of the old videos i've been watching some of brian's old videos so i can uh, expository study i started with ephesians best place to start to do some highlighting and evaluating my life and look at my life as a christian um it's not always easy so it's not that it's, I, I believe people there's yet lost people that don't want the truth they're there let them do their own thing. Let the, see, let them alone. They be blind leaders of the blind. If the blind lead the blind, they both fall into a ditch. The Bible says that. But with saved, if someone doesn't get around to watching my channel, as long as they're watching some Bible-believing, God-fearing channel, truly Bible-believing, God-fearing channel. I've had some people try to link things to me. Oh, what about this guy? Or I've seen links in other brothers' videos channel, under their channel, under their videos. Well, I just watch you and this other guy, and I go watch that other guy, and I'm, and it's like that guy is kind of out there, you know. I was watching uh, someone's I forgot the guy's name, but he was doing a video on um, this uh, uh, CCNM music group. Uh, I think Casting Crowns was was it, and they're singing with the Catholic. And these Casting Crowns, they teach the proper gospel, and they're just falling away and everything. And I just, just went like this and just face palm. They're not Christians, those casting crown people. They're Catholics. That's why they're singing with Catholics. That's why they're inviting Catholics in. It's all part of that scheme. They're all Catholics. Okay. They don't believe, I don't know if they believe in the King James Bible as God's perfect written word, but they teach the easy believism. No changed life. Just, just believe. That's it. And it's like, uh, the guy just, there's just too many red flags. And I was like, it's hard to find true Bible-believing, God-fearing men and women today, or men. I say women because there's women trying to get in ministry. I have nothing wrong with the woman getting on behind the camera and the elder women teaching the younger women good things. I've yet to see a woman that'll do that. Okay, I'm sorry, but I have. Every woman that someone points at that I go to just to take a look at, they end up trying to be a pastor. They end up trying to preach and teach the word to both men and women. Okay, they cross the line and they usurp the authority of man. Okay, man comes along and says she's wrong. Who are the women going to listen to, the man or her? Her, come on, be honest in this day and age. Let's be honest. But I have nothing against a, a sister in Christ saying, you know what, I'm going to make some uh, videos on how to be a good keeper at home, how to have modest dresses, how to do things in modest dresses, okay, how to love your husband. How to raise your children in the admonition of the Lord, teaching your children and raising them. Okay, doing videos like that, it's something that's it's something that's sorely needed. It really is. Okay. But um, like I said, I just do my best to preach the word, and people can take it or leave it. And there's times where people I've had brethren correct me, and I've had to make corrections, <laughs> and I've had to make corrections. All right. So he says, I see your channel is extremely under underrated in my opinion. And your video warning me against falling for a lost woman may have saved me from that situation. As I am 23 and single and have been for a long time. I feel like I was soon ready to compromise. However, I would rather be single 
then go through similar to what you have. You put some fear of the Lord in me. It is obvious to me the Lord is working through your ministry. I just All I'm going to say about that video was is that video was, I'm glad this brother had got the point of the video. It was to warn you single. Are you finished? They're going to do a crow off or something because there's other crows in the neighborhood. <laughs> and there's the crow in the neighborhood, so now he's going to go off again maybe. Um, the whole point of that video was to warn single sisters in Christ and brothers in Christ. The whole point of it, don't go through it. There's brethren today that can testify that they're going through it. They're married to lost people. They got saved while their wife or husband is lost. And they can testify their life is not, you know, just the funnest thing in the world, being married to someone who's lost. You don't want to be married to someone who's lost. So make sure that that person doesn't talk the talk only. Make sure that person walks the walk. They talk the talk and they walk the walk, whether in word or in deed, do all to the glory of God. I think do all in the name of Jesus Christ. I think is what it said. Right. So I'm glad you got the point of that video. That was the whole video. It wasn't about backbiting, um, drama, or any of that stuff. It was just to warn the brethren not to go through what I went through. I was looking over at him because I knew he was going to go off again. So, let's keep going here. I also would like some tracks, brother. I will buy them. I'm also having some of my own tracks made, trying to wake people up to the church building and Trinity things. Just bringing those topics up alone may lead people to the truth because some of these professing Christians never had to defend their beliefs in their lives. Absolutely. Um, it's all, they go to this Babel building and it's all the cult of um, personality. It's all about, you know, we all just come together, put aside our differences, come together and party hardy and have a good time. You know, you don't have to defend your beliefs. You want to believe that? That's fine. You never have to defend your beliefs. Someone who's truly saved, born again, they have to defend their beliefs. Also, how else can I serve the Lord at 23 aside, tracting and witnessing? God bless you, brother. All right. Gospel tracks. Uh, things I've been doing. Let's see if I can get this back up there. We've been, I've been mailing a lot of these out to some people. Uh, I've been trying to stuff some envelopes full of these as best I can. And I try to stuff, get one of these books in there. This was done by Brother JT. Uh, it was a really good book that he did. How to be saved and know it. So I put one of these in there for you. And then I try to just stuff it as many of these gospel tracks as possible. You know, first side has time is running out. Are you ready for the wages of sin is death, hell. And below it says, And whosoever was not found written in the book of life with cast in the lake of fire. When they open it up, they'll see heaven, but the gift of God is eternal life through Christ Jesus our Lord. So the wages of sin is death. Are you ready for hell? But over here it says heaven, but the gift of God is eternal life through Christ Jesus our Lord. For there is one God and one meter between God and man, the man Christ Jesus. And as you go into it, it goes through the plan of salvation. It talks about your sinner, repentance, Jesus dying on the cross so on and so forth. Okay? And the whole point is, is the doors have not closed completely. Okay, This brother in Christ, let me tell you something. Uh, you don't have to be in full-time ministry to be serving the Lord. A lot of pe brethren, I've talked to some of the brethren, and I'm talking about brethren, brothers in Christ that want to get into full-time ministry. I just really want to serve the Lord. Here's the thing. You don't have to be in full-time ministry to be serving the Lord full-time. I'll say it again. You don't have to be in full-time ministry to be serving the Lord full-time. You serve Him with your prayer. You stay in prayer every day. Okay? You reading the Word every day. You studying the Bible. You living it. Are you living a life of Christ? Making spiritual sacrifices, getting sin out of your life. You're making sure your life is in, is right in God's eyes. You got physical work stuff to provide for yourself. If you're married, to provide for your family. Okay. Um, we're all called into the ministry of reconciliation. I handed out a couple gospel tracts today, physically handed them out because a lot of places around here are starting to require the mask. And OSHA's cracking down, saying you have to have it. There's no such thing as medical condition that prevents you from wearing it. They're really, some businesses are just, Bymart, I can't go to Bymart anymore. God has blessed me. There's another store I can go to to get everything I need that I used to get from Bymart. I get my chicken feed somewhere else now. Um, I can still go to Fred Meyer's and get food and shop without a mask. 
Um, so there's still some places that are open, but for the most part, it's gonna, the doors have not closed for witnessing and handing out gospel tracts, brothers and sisters in Christ. The doors have not closed yet. If you can walk around town, you can walk around the park, for me the beach, I was on the beach today when I handed out a couple of these, you can physically hand them out and it's not illegal, the doors haven't closed. You can stand there with the sign and you know, you have the sign that says, for the wage of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Christ Jesus our Lord. And you can just stand somewhere with a sign and have like a backpack or something on you full of gospel tracts and just stand there holding out gospel tracts. You don't have to yell. You don't have to put on a big show and try to start a fight or anything. If someone has questions, you can try to answer questions. Be careful. Some people will come up to ask questions to distract you from your job. If it feels like they're just distracting you, say, I'm done. And you go back to standing there and handing out gospel tracts. Okay, don't let them distract you from doing the work of the Lord. But you can still preach the plan of salvation in America, at least. Okay, The doors haven't closed completely in America. Okay? So I've been trying to send out one of these with at least a couple hundred of these. Um, so uh, I will get these to you. This is my last book. I went ahead and ordered some more books because I like these books. Um, so I've been trying to get these books. A lot of people have been asking for them, so I have been sending them. And like I said, the Lord has blessed me, and uh, if it ever becomes a big financial burden trying to mail all these gospel tracts out and everything, as long as the doors, I can still go to the gross, uh, gross, um, post office. I can still walk in there without a mask, praise the Lord. Um, the Lord makes me invisible or it makes it where the guy doesn't question me or anything. I walk in, pick up some mail, and I drop some mail off. That door hasn't closed. It could close where I can't mail anymore. But for the most part, it isn't. So I'm going to try to get that to you, brother. Um, and I responded to this, brother, in, in a little bit more detail. Things you can do for the Lord at a young age, okay? Prayer is a big thing. Praying for the brethren. Praying for ministries. Supporting ministries with prayer and some ministries if they need financial backing. Financially supporting some ministries, okay? But the biggest thing you can do in your life that has to do with serving the Lord is living a life of Christ. Clean your life up. And at such a young age, at 23, in this day and age, you're going to get this pressure. I'm just, I'll be honest with you, brother says Christ, I really don't want to go into town anymore. But I know people have to go to work. People aren't in the same situation. God has different situations for different people. And you have to go into town and you have to deal with people. And these 23 year old, like, like this brother in Christ, you got all this peer pressure that you're trying to get away from, all this brainwashing that you're trying to get away from after you, God saves you. And focus hardcore serving the Lord with your life, how you live your life, the stands you take, the do's, the don'ts. Okay, stay in the Word of God every day. Stay in prayer every day. Get some old hymns and start memorizing some old hymns. That is serving the Lord. You don't have to be behind the camera to serve the Lord. You don't have to be in full-time ministry to serve the Lord, okay? You do that, and you go through a lot of life experiences, and you get your life and get where your heart is perfect before the Lord. Somewhere down the road, God might call you into ministry. He might, okay? Or He might just have you set there to fellowship with some of the brethren, to, to teach some of the brethren to be a teacher, but not really in full-time ministry, okay? I really don't consider myself full-time ministry. Okay? Um, I, and this is a whole nother study, but uh, you look at Paul, he's the only example I can give that you could probably say it's full-time ministry because there's no full-time ministry in Scripture. It's just ministry. And everybody has different ministries, different callings from the Lord, different gifts. Uh, but Paul, it's just his whole life, his whole life was serving God. All right? He was going all over the place, writing letters. When he was sick, you know, people were coming to his place that he's staying at, and even lost people coming to hear the gospel and to hear about Jesus Christ. He was preaching the salvation to people, and he was preaching the life of a Christian to the body of Christ. And he was going all over the place. It was almost like 24-7. That was his life. Okay. To me, just making a few videos for me, it's not full-time ministry for me. Some people can do it a lot better than I can. Don't get me wrong. They can do a lot. I, there's some brethren out there that do a lot of better studies than I do. And, uh, 
they do a lot more behind the scenes than just making videos but for me I just I make videos and the only thing I'm trying to do behind the scenes that's a little bit different other than my personal walk with the Lord is I'm trying to help out with the gospel tracks trying to get and promote the gospel tracks so I'm gonna get you some of those gospel tracks brothers in Christ I really am but I want to read a second email that he sent me for a prayer request okay because he was talking about up there uh, having his own gospel tracks made up, okay? So I got a second email back after I encouraged him and responded to the email. It says, I do feel like we are scattered among the wolves, brother, and as far as my tracks are going, it looks like they won't be happening. I sent my tracks in, and they, and they, and they guy, I think he's meant that guy, who was going to make print them for me, said, due to good conscience, he will not be printing my cultic KGV-only beliefs because I attacked the other versions. Yep. He said I should be leading people to Christ. Ironic about the good conscience thing. Also, most people are professing Christians anyway, so what is wrong with me shedding truth in a tract to possibly deceive Christians? Question mark. You know, he's not trying to deceive anybody. I had a section on how to be saved using only scripture for those who know they are lost. But I don't know, brother, this world is crazy. However, I would love to pass out those tracks you have. Like I said, I'll try to get you some of those tracks. But I had to put that in there when he sent me back saying, hey, that person refused to do any gospel tracks that attack the Bible perversions and everything. And it's like, really? Yeah. Um, I'll link it again. Uh, Brother Matthew has some videos on and a uh, place where you can download the outline to the tracks that we're doing so if you want to try to make your own tracks where they're geared more towards um, uh, like the Bible version issue for those people who profess to be saved and use Bible versions or to Catholics or to Mormons you can go in there and tweak it and change it and and basically build your own gospel track that you can print out yourself he's got the outline set up it's a pretty amazing outline uh, he's done a lot of work very knowledgeable in it you can even ask him questions um, so yeah there's people it's it's hard to get good gospel tracks today we have people that are falling away you have people that are compromising their gospel tracks are going to the way of easy believism the gospel tracks are leaving out repentance the gospel tracks are promoting just prayer only you just say a little prayer and you're in um, gospel tracks trying to get little kids saved I'm talking about little kids and it's like uh, no um, you gotta be at an age uh, that's a whole nother study too but the point is is there's just so much compromise when it comes to gospel tracks we want the simple plan of salvation True biblical repentance is godly sorrow. Sorrow towards God. That's what godly sorrow is. Sorrow towards God for your personal sins. What does that do? That leads you to the cross. That leads you to Jesus Christ. It's not just knowing the gospel, but it's understanding the gospel. You miss heaven by 13 inches. It's knowing, it's, it's understanding the gospel. You can have the head knowledge, the belief, but 1 Corinthians 15 2 says you can believe in vain. If you skip repentance, you'll never understand the gospel, and you'll never get saved. So repentance, uh, belief in the finished work of Jesus Christ on the cross, confessing both in prayer and asking God to save you, and God changing your life after salvation. Now that you're saved, get in the King James Bible, and God's going to change your life, and God will clean up your life. You're going to have a changed life. You're a new creature in Christ Jesus. The simple plan of salvation just seems to get muddied. It seems to get downplayed. They're too busy with their pictures and this. and It's like it's hard to find good gospel tracts. Plain plan of salvation. How to find God's grace. What saves you? God's grace does. How do you find that grace? Here's how you find the grace. It's just hard to find some of those. Um, this is another brother in Christ. I want to read this real quick because it's a prayer request. I sent him some gospel tracts. He, he asked for some gospel tracts, and then he emailed me back saying he got them. And this is what he put down. He said, got them in today. Thank you again. I come from a large family, 90% of them professing Christians, and most of those Catholic. Yet they all serve a, he puts A in quotations, Jesus, not the, capital, I'll capitalize the, Jesus, our Lord and God. That's right, Jesus who is God fully and completely. My great aunt died several weeks ago now, and she admitted that she just didn't believe. We're having a memorial for her on September 1st, and the entire family will be there. It will be 
at my mom's house. I'd like, I'd like to ask her if I can see set these out there in hopes that someone will take one. She is also a professing Christian, and while I do think she generally believes on the Lord Jesus Christ, but remember, as we read this, remember 1 Corinthians 15 too. Believes on the Lord Jesus Christ, she hasn't accepted the Godhead and still isn't convinced about the Bible version issue. So at, at times I wonder. She also thinks we should only show our walk and not talk it so as not to offend. We all need to get along, so don't offend anybody. You know, I've been there. Um, and here it is. I have and still daily do bring this before God that He would open the doors for me to place these tracks where He wants them. I'd like it. I say I'd like if you could pray also that the Lord will open this door for the memorial and that He would penetrate someone's heart with His words. The brother in Christ. Okay, brethren, we need to pray for this brother, and I'm praying for all of you when you're with these gospel tracts and with any gospel tracts with the true plan of salvation that the doors remain open as long as they can and if the doors in your area have completely closed brothers and sisters of Christ they have completely closed move on to another city but I'm telling you right now the doors haven't completely closed as long as you can stand there with a sign and hold gospel tracts out that hasn't closed. As long as you can go for a walk in the park and as you pass people, can I give you this gospel track? No, okay, keep walking. Can I give you this gospel track? And you keep walking. And you might only hand out one. You might only hand out two. Sometimes you can hand out 30. Okay, they might read it for a little bit and then throw it away. They might not even look at it all and throw away. But the doors are still open for us to hand out gospel tracks to verbally preach the plan of salvation. Okay, the doors haven't closed yet, but there might be big cities where there's a lot of violence. Everything's just destructive. Nobody wants the truth. You have family members, and you need to move to another city. I understand, but remember, if the doors are still open, do your best to serve God where you're at. And if God calls you away from that area, get away from that area. But until then, do your best to serve God where you're at. I was going wondering, what am I going to do? All the places I would drop gospel tracks. And I'm trying to get back to my normal walk with the Lord. Things still haven't gotten back to being normal around here. And it's been a year and a half to two years um, since I screwed up. So the brethren know what I'm talking about um, since I sinned and screwed up. But things, the doors aren't closed. I went to walk on the beach today and it was a great feeling to walk on the beach. I had my cute cards in my back pocket. was going through scripture, talking to the Lord about scripture. About what I'm seeing in the world and anytime I came across somebody there were some people that they either had a big dog and I had my little dog and she's been attacked before or I chickened out sometimes but for the most part the Lord blessed me with giving me the courage to hand them out to people the doors are not closed they're still open brothers and sisters of Christ so I will be praying for you for that specific situation that memorial I'm not one to tell you if you're living at home and you need your mother's permission ask your mom but I just err on, on ignorance and I just lay in places and then if she gets upset, pick them up and then go give them to people who want them. You know, that's, that's just me. Uh, but if you live with her and you feel you have to ask her, ask her. But I pray that she doesn't have a problem with it. I really do. I pray that she can be distracted. If she does have a problem with it, she can be distracted to the point where she will say yes and let you do it. But, you know, I'm praying for you and I'm praying for all the brothers and sisters in Christ out there that our gospel tracting and the sisters in Christ and everything and I just I love you guys just my biggest prayer for you and for you to help me support this ministry is pray that I keep my eyes on Jesus that I keep my walk with the Lord strong that I don't let things bottle up inside me anger bitterness I don't let this world distract me the cares of this world I'm always praying for the cares of this world when it comes to men in ministry that they don't let the cares of this world get in the way of your work for the Lord and if it goes the same for all brothers and sisters of Christ with your walk with the Lord I pray that the cares of this world don't get in the way of it and there's a lot of brethren brothers and sisters out there that they need prayer their life is just uh, I have a brother um, Alexander uh, praise the Lord he's gotten a new place that he's going to stay at and it's a better home a better place that he can make a godly home uh, abstain from, I always preach the abstain from all appearance of evil uh, there's just a lot of prayer they abstain from all appearance of evil free zone, I always call it. That's what your home's supposed to be. 
you might get vexed by that world because you have to go out there. You have a job or you have to go get some groceries. But you should always have a place you can come back to that is an abstain from all appearance of evil free zone. It's a godly home. The Word of God is the foundation of that home. And that's how it's run and how it looks. Okay. That's what you're supposed to do. And there's a lot of brethren that don't have that. And there's prayer for them too. Okay. Prayer, prayer, prayer. Pray for one another. Encourage one another. Help one another. Be there for one another. Okay. And don't lose sight of that. One of the things that I was distracted on, and I'm going to end it with this, is I was distracted on some of the problems I was going through and wasn't being, having grace, charity, for some of the other brethren that were having some of the same problems or having problems of their own. And I got so distracted by the cares of this world and my own problems that I started being uh, disrespectful to some of the brethren that were having problems of their own or having some of the same problems I was having. And that's something I'm working on. And once again, I'm going to do a public apology to those brethren again for that. Um, so get back to taking care of the brethren. We're supposed to be one body. We're supposed to be brothers and sisters in Christ. And we're supposed to be there for one another. So prayer is a big thing. Prayer is very powerful. Keep praying for us. Okay. So I just want to do this update to promote the gospel tracts again, the booklets I'm given, the prayer for these brethren, that those who get gospel tracts that or have their own gospel tracts, that God gives them every opportunity, opens doors, keeps doors open. We need those prayers, brothers and sisters of Christ, okay? Uh, you make your request known before God, the Bible says. Okay, you make your request known before God. Okay? I believe God will keep the doors open as long as we have the heart of we're here to do the work for you, O Lord. We're here to do this for you. The doors will remain open All right. uh, for as long as it can. It's not going to stay open forever. I understand that, brothers. But to keep them open as long as they can. Okay. One of the biggest things about this ministry was this words have meaning. Was to teach you, brethren, that words have meaning. Be careful not to add to the word of God or subtract to the word of God. Okay. Because words have meaning and to encourage the brethren. Encourage the brethren to keep their eyes on Jesus Christ as they're going through this wicked, wicked world today and have to be, deal with all this wickedness and this vexation and, and, and hold them accountable to the Word of God and encourage them when it comes to their own flesh to make sure that their heart, keep your heart for the Lord, keep your heart, eyes on the Lord through His written Word. That's why the Bible says, uh, Thy word have I hid in my heart, that I might not sin against thee. You hide God's Word in your heart, that's how you keep your eyes on them. You hide them in your heart because you're applying them to your life. It's only in your head if you're not applying them to your life. It's in your heart if your heart's desire is, I want that in my life. That's what it means to hide God's Word in your heart. So, thank you for the emails. I do appreciate the emails. And uh, the ministry is still going to try to push the, the gospel tracts. Just email the ministry when you want some gospel tracts. And as long as the doors remain open and the finances stay there, I will tr try to take care of emailing. Right now I found packets that were like $7 to mail it anywhere in the U.S. And I can stuff those suckers really full. And it's, it's been a blessing that I can still do that. So if you need to, ask them. But when you email me, make sure to give me uh, an address to mail to. Some people forget to do that, which is okay. But it just, I need a place to mail them if you want uh, some gospel tracts and these gospel booklets. So I want to end this with grace and peace from God our Father and our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. And my love for you in Christ Jesus our Lord. Thank you for watching.